there's no doubt that semigration is taking Mzansi by storm. And the best advice usually comes from those who've walked the journey. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Hetty the Entrepreneur and a very warm welcome to you all. Today's guest is no stranger to the podcast. He's participated in our super fan game shows and has over 1,500 comments on the Private Property Facebook page. And he's even been featured on our first time Home Buyers show. He's an aspiring property mogul with a couple of property investments under his belt. Please welcome the super fan of the evening, Sammy Mahlatsi. A very warm welcome to you, Sammy. Yes, good evening to everybody. Good evening, Haiti. Uh, yeah, thanks for hosting me tonight. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful, Sammy. It's always wonderful to chat to a super fan. So, Sammy, this evening we are talking all about semigration and delving into your own experience with semigration. So, let's get straight into it. Sammy, tell us what is the reason that you decided to semigrate? Yeah, you know, um, the reason behind my semigration was just to look for opportunities. That's one. One big reason that I, I, I wanted to move from Limpopo to better place where I can find opportunities. Uh, Houten was the closest to me, then I chose it. Then uh, I, yeah, I think Houten, looking for opportunities. And one other thing, I think also looking for schools. That's what made me to decide to move to Houten and house looking for a property was one other reason because I just realized being back home in Limbobo, properties then, they were not in like uh, 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 being valued in, 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 in rural areas. Then I, I had to look for a property where it will, it will generate uh, in the long run some, some, some value for me. Absolutely. It always makes so much sense to actually semigrate to look for greener pastures. So which city in particular in Gauteng did you semigrate to, Sammy? Yeah. Okay, no, I semigrated to Tswani, Pretoria, for, formerly known. Yeah, then I started in townships, Sushangube. That's where we I moved in. Then we got a property in Sushangube there. Ah, fantastic. So tell us about the move, Sammy. How did you settle into your new home? Oh, it was a bit tough. You know, you buy a house that it's being, somebody was living in that they were not looking after it very well. Mm. Then, you know, with lack of experience on some of the things, you get into a property because of you liked the place, you liked the yard was big enough. Then you start renovating here and there but without even having an idea to say you were really investing in that property you know you, th you, you think you just you just get in there for the sake of you need a place to live in then with the little bit renovation that you make in the long run they tend they come back to 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 assist you when you want to maybe sell to move to a, a, another area Absolutely. It really does make a huge difference to improve upon the quality of the property that you are staying in. So, Sammy, how would you say that semigrating has changed the quality of your life? You know, when I was back home in Limpopo, so many things, there were lack of opportunities, lack of knowledge. You know, then you come to Tuan, where everything is, is moving very fast, then you meet different people, you know, then uh, that's where you start seeing or no, they, it's, it's, everything is different here. People are leaving, uh, the movement, everything, you know, you, you, you meet great people in your life when you are around places like Houting, where there are opportunities and where there are schools, you know. Absolutely. Sammy, this has really been so highly informative. I feel like I could chat to you as our super fan for the entire night. Perhaps last but not least, Sammy, 
what tips or advice do you have for those private property fans that are thinking about semigrating? I think what one should look into, they should look into a place where you, you know you, you, you want to semigrate, but you must also look at some factors. I think number one, affordability is very important. And don't just move to an area where you can't find uh, opportunities. Because either way, you'll move to a place where you can find opportunities, then down the line, maybe a few years later, you'll want to move to another place. I know that because of maybe your of employment and stuff like that. But also you must consider the movement is not as cheap as one could think. You need to look at the investment value that you made. Because sometimes you might buy a property when you semigrate to, to, to a new place where selling you'll find it now, it, it doesn't uh, uh, advantage you. You'll find you are selling at a lower or the property hasn't uh, uh, accumulated any value. Then it's, it will be a little difficult for, for one to just decide to move. Then number two, one should also look at things like, is there a mall, shopping centers? Uh, uh, look at crime, uh, do, do your research, uh, check uh, uh, the highways, how far are you from the highways? Because as, as, as you grow, you start also wanting to drive to other nearby places where you are looking for more opportunities. Then look at the traffic, look at schools, because maybe you might be moving with your family. If Are there enough schools uh, that can cater for your children's education? and stuff like that. And don't forget in yourself also, you look at the opportunities around that can also benefit you in the long run, because of now you know that there will be a mall that will be built, there will be a school, there will be a university. You look at some of the things, the, the future plan for, 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 for the areas that you want to move at. Wow, that, those are really, really valuable insights that you have shared with us this evening, Sammy. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Sammy, for sharing your insights with us and for being a private property super fan. We look forward to hosting you once again. No, uh, thanks to you, because you, you know, this shows they, they, they've educated me since the beginning when it started with uh, Zama from the first episode that we, yeah. And, and today look where we are. We are one of the best people when coming to properties just because of uh, 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 the, the shows that we watched from day one until the 504th show tonight. And yeah, I really appreciate and the time given by everybody to, to be able to share my experience. That was Sammy Mashazi, our super fan over here at Private Property Podcast. Now, let us know, private property fans, would you consider semigrating, moving from one province to another, or perhaps one city to another? Let us know within the comment section. And as you can see, it really does pay to be a super fan. Now we are back again with another history class. So get cozy because we're about to go back in time. This is South African history. The right to free movement. The government restricted the freedom of movement for black citizens from rural to urban areas during the apartheid era. Black citizens needed to obtain a pass to move between locations. Arrival of the Dutch. In 1652, Dutch colonists arrived at the Cape of Good Hope to supply fresh food and water to ships traveling from Europe. As the number of Dutch colonists increased, forcibly acquiring land from farms and clashing with the indigenous African people. The Great Trek, Migration to the Center. The migration of thousands of Dutch-speaking families towards the country's interior became known as the Great Trek, and those who migrated became known as the Fur Trekkers. First records of semigration. 
The Second Boer War dis destroyed the livelihood of many rural farmers, leading to them joining numerous locals and immigrants fighting for employment in industrial areas. Now that was quite a mouthful. We hope that you had as much fun learning about our history as I did teaching it to you. Thank you so much, Private Property Fam, for showing us love on Facebook. We truly do appreciate it. Now, it's time to announce tonight's winner of the 500 Rand Prize. Can you guess who it is? Let us know within the comment section if you can guess who the winner of the 500 Rand Prize is. Da 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 da. So, the winner of the 500 Rand Prize for the most interaction is Sandy Shabekia. Drop us an inbox to claim your prize, Sandy. This is absolutely amazing. And do join us again on Monday for another insight-packed episode. Now, don't forget to like, share, and follow all of our social media platforms. And remember, a healthy dose of property information might just be what you need to get back onto your A-game. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Hetty the Entrepreneur. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.